Hi, welcome to another CFF init tutorial. In this tutorial, we are going to talk about updating your existing citation.cff file. If you want to create a new file, please check the description for the link to our other tutorial. Since version 2.2.0, it is now possible to update your citation.cff file using CFF init. Common reasons to update your citation.cff include adding new authors and identifiers or updating to a newer version of the CFF schema. Using CFF init ensures that the file remains valid throughout the process. To begin, let's click on Update. In this screen, you can simply paste your citation.cff contents and then click on the Parse button. When you click the Parse button, if there are any errors in the field above, the screen will show them. For instance, if I say dash a colon colon and I try to parse this, it's going to say that this is an error from YAML. This is expected behavior because, well, this is actually an error. You don't want something like that. It might also happen with something much simpler like title, my title, and then you say dash message, my message. This is not a valid YAML file, so it's not a valid CFF. This should be the format, not a dash message. If errors appear, verify that you copy pasted all characters correctly. If instead of errors there are warnings, usually means that the parsing worked, but there are some caveats. Pay attention to the warning. They might inform you of things being removed or changed drastically. Sometimes though, they are just giving some necessary information. Let me copy one of my citation CFF examples and show a few of the most common warnings. So here I parse. So you can see here the first warning is the CFF version was updated to 1.2.0. This might lead to some issues, so verify before downloading. The CFF version was 1.0.3. So that means that I created my file a few years ago. The CFF schema was updated since then, so it is better to use a newer version. CFF init is using the latest version, which is 1.2.0, and you can't choose another version. So here it is saying that we are updating forcefully to version 1.2.0. The second warning is property given name, uh, column Abel, inside authors was ignored. Check if the key is correct. And in fact, the given name is not correct. You should have given names. Now the field is correct. If you try to parse again, that error is gone. Another example, property description. So notice here is description. Then all the deposition site identifiers was ignored. So yes, the description doesn't exist. It should be description. And again, it tells me to check if the key is correct. In both cases, authors and identifiers, you have nested keys. So if something appears inside one of them, it's going to be ignored. So you have to check the warnings to see if that happened. Here again, I fixed it, I can parse again. Finally, there's something called bad field, which was not identified as a basic field. It was passed as an extra CFF field. So notice that this is different from before. The other properties were ignored, but bad field is kept inside the extra CFF fields. The reason for that is that we don't verify what's written here compared to the CFF schema. So it could actually be something valid, like prefer citation. If you are unsure of whether this is correct or not, you can just move on and check later. In this case, it is not correct, bad field is wrong, so I want to remove. Of course, in practice, it's very hard for you to actually create something completely random, like bad field. It's more probable that you have, for instance, removed the first letter when copy-pasting. So FF version now is said that it's a new property that was not identified. That's not what you want. If you check the file correctly, you're going to see that's missing a C here. Now it's parsing again correctly. So let me show a different example now. This is the example that we created on the last video. This is a larger example. So look down here. We only have these two. When I click parse, there's a new warning now called property prefer citation was not identified as a basic field. So it was passed as an extra CFF field. This is fine. This is exactly what we wanted. We created this citation.cff using CFF init, so we know that it is valid. 
Finally, the last thing to notice regarding the update and the parsing is that there is no validation at this point. So if you change something like the value of email to remove the Ponta now, this is not a valid email anymore, but if you parse, it's not going to complain. I'm going to leave it as it is so I can fix inside and you can see what happens. Start editing. Now we are in the form as usual, but with all steps enabled here in the left. You can immediately see the errors that might exist. For instance, alters. Hopefully in your case, there should be none, especially if you created your file using CFF in it. You can now move to the files and fix the errors and update what you need to update. So in this case, I can go to alters. You can see that there is a red border here indicating that there is an error. You click on edit and you can fix the error. Ponta now. Done. So let's say that I want to create a new author. I can add more authors, as I said before, John Doe. You can change other things as well and you can now click on them since they are already enabled. So I can add this. I can fix things that I did wrong before, like the keywords actually is not software, is good software, I don't know, whatever you want to do. And the extra CFF fields have the preferred citation as we have created them in the past. That's it. You can update this at will and your citation CFF will be validated and you can just download that. I hope this tutorial was useful. Please let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching, like and subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.